Hello, friends. Welcome to my studio here in the capital city of Columbus, Ohio. My name is Jeremy Slagle, and I'm so excited that you're here with us. Happy Ash Wednesday to those who celebrate it. And also, uh, this is my little beast. This is Penny. Penny is here with me this morning to let you know that today also happens to be National Walk Your Dog Day. So don't forget to grab your best friend, head out for an adventure today. It's going to be a beautiful one. Uh, Penny is uh, is the head of hospitality here at the studio, and she's a four-month-old golden doodle and just a total blast. You want to say something? She just wants to lick the microphone, apparently. So uh, glad we're here today. Thank you for joining us. This is day two. That was stressful on my arm. Thank you, Faith. Uh, and I'm really, really, really excited to be with you. So I just want to encourage you guys to join the Adobe Live community and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, you can follow us at Adobe Live on Instagram for the latest streams and updates and more. I uh, wanted to just kind of welcome a couple people to the chat here. Can I see that, girl? Sorry about that. I'm running on a couple different monitors here. So, uh, Fabio, thank you for joining us. Uh, Paco, thanks for your comment. She is super cute. Uh, Gareth, uh, thanks for joining us. Rob and Anika, Sean, Gareth, thank you for joining us uh, for this this uh, session today. Sorry about that. We're running a little crazy this morning. So um, I wanted to start off by just kind of recapping our week a little bit. Yesterday, I showed you some illustrations about uh, some illustrations that I did and, and how I work on illustrating plants. Today, we're going to talk about animals, which is another great reason Penny is hanging out with us today. And uh, Thursday, I will share my process for creating illustrations for children's books. So uh, let me jump uh, over here. So one of the things I wanted to mention is, is that during this today, we are going to be spending a lot of time just kind of looking at Adobe Illustrator brushes. And um, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, you're going to get a great lesson on how they work today. And uh, but I just wanted to let you know, there are a few ways you can grab some of those brushes for your use. Um, so let's go ahead and hop over to my screen. So there's some free brushes available. Thank you to Adobe. Um, they commissioned me to do this illustration uh, in December and they put up a, uh, a download link for free where you can download the brushes I created for this illustration. The brushes look a lot like this because this is exactly them. Uh, and if you go to the uh, link down below in the show notes, you'll be able to find a link to where you can download those from Adobe. You can also buy them. There's lots of them available. I sell them on my website at slagledesign.com. They're also available through great places like Retro Supply, Creative Market, Gumroad. Um, there's lots of great resources out there. But my favorite way to do it is to make brushes. And so I wanted to uh, just point out that that this is something you can do. It's, it's super fun. Um, it allows you to create some stuff that's truly unique and different. And, and makes your work different than everybody else's. So um, I do host a workshop for that. These are some pictures of my workshop. That handsome gentleman with the mustache on the right is your very own Andrew Hawkrattle. Uh, and basically, if you go to my website and you look under workshops, you'll find all of the opportunities of, for live workshops I have coming up here this year. So today we're going to talk about illustrating animals. I do a lot of illustrating animals. Um, I'm not sure why, except for the fact that I love them so much. Um, also have a client that I worked with last year to do some really cool stuff that were specific to like the kind of animals you want to have in your garden, the kind you want to have in your garden and the kind you don't want to have in your garden. And this was for a project we did with the Scott's company um, right around 2020, 2021. And then I've also done some work, uh, some personal work where we are members here at the Columbus Zoo. We have a really amazing zoo here in town. And uh, I just love going and sketching the animals. And these are just a few of my favorites. These are some that I worked on this past summer. And just to encourage you guys, um, I posted these on my Instagram as a personal project, as a personal side project, tagged Adobe on it and um, within a couple of weeks, I got a lot of uh, attention for these and Adobe actually reached out. And that's how I ended up getting that rhinoceros 
project that you saw before. So, you know, just to encourage you, if there's something you love to illustrate or something you love to design, you don't have to get paid for it. Go to, go do something creative with your time. If you have spare time, put it up on the internet. You never know what's going to happen. So this is a really good example of that. And um, I have another one from this series that we're going to look at specifically today. It's a red panda. Red pandas are like some of my favorite animals. Um, and then there's another project I'm doing right now that also includes animals. We touched on this a little bit yesterday as well. It's for a local parks company here in Columbus. And uh, thank you, David. I saw your comment there. I appreciate that. Um, and I uh, just wanted to uh, point out that this is a very, very different style, but I'm also using brushes in my uh, work here. And so this is a very different style. When I was working with the folks here at these uh, metro parks, they wanted something that looked a lot more realistic like the animals, unlike the ones I showed you before. So I kind of developed this whole uh, process for, for using brushes to create these, these as well. So I'm going to hit on these today, show you kind of uh, how I go about approaching these as well. So I'm going to hop over here to Illustrator. Let's close that out. And I am going to start today with this cute little fella. This is a red panda and one of the most adorable creatures on the planet, in my opinion. Um, but I, like I said, I did this as a fun project, just something for, uh, for fun because I love animals. Um, let's see. So one of the things I want to tell you is that almost everything that I start out with Whenever I create an illustration, I start with sketches and references. So here's a couple photos that I've pulled down. Uh, these ones actually from on Adobe stock. And um, you kind of get an idea over here to the right what my rough sketches look like. These are typically in a small sketchbook. I do them super tiny um, and they are just for me to get some sort of an idea in general, like what's the main form What's kind of the grid? How am I gonna um, approach this just from a, like a 30,000 foot view? One of the things I love about these uh, animals, if you look at their faces, their faces are very symmetrical and you can almost see all the geometry happening in it. It's really, really cool just the way they're designed. So um, I'm gonna pop over here and show you that what I do is once I've kind of figured out, so like in this situation with this sketch, I decided, that I was going to use that big chunky tail that they have to just complete a circle coming around the vine like you'll see on the left and you'll see on the right are the grid the the grid that I created and with guides uh, right here in Illustrator. And you'll see that also like I was able to like completely bisect this this circle with a line which is the baseline for where uh, his paws are, and even where these circles continue all the way around, um, I stopped, for instance, the tail right at that like bottom point right here, right at that like six o'clock spot. And then you'll also notice that subtly there's a, a, a leaf that's marking the 12 o'clock spot right there at the top. And even the shape of his foot and where his foot fits, fits exactly in here. And these leaves fit in this. So it really just kind of visually creates a whole thing. Hi, clever Dev, De Devlin, De Devlin. I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but I like it. Thank you uh, for your comment. Thanks, uh, RB, for your comment on that, for the slick design comment. I appreciate that. Uh, so even here where I'm trying to figure out a couple different angles, like where this leg goes, I'm going to just draw those back to this point. So even though you don't really see it when the final illustration is done, it helps kind of just create some sort of a visual and I think people see it, whether, you know, you show them the guides or not. I think it's an important part of, of all of these. Um, just to pull it over here for a second and show you something similar. This is a sloth that I did. Same sort of thing. Um, the grid's very different. I'm using circles and shapes, but I'm using re repeating angles here a lot. So um, this circle here, for instance, that is in kind of got his whole body in here. If you divide that circle down the center, you'll notice it kind of lines up with the edge of the head. The head circle is the same exact size circle I'm using for his left arm there. And, uh, so got lots of strong verticals. And then I've kind of using this angle and repeating circles a lot. And you can see how that, um, just adds a really nice baseline to your illustration. So um, 
I'll tell you though, when, when you first start working on, on these, you get a very boring illustration. And um, I had someone tell me once that whenever you're working on a design project or an illustration project or painting or whatever you happen to be doing, you have to work past the ugly stage. Um, if I did an illustration that looked like this, I would be like, okay, this isn't really going anywhere. It'd be easy for me to give up on it. Um, but there's just so much you can do um, once you understand kind of the power of textures and the tools that you have in Illustrator with brushes that you can do to really enhance him. So what I'll do is just kind of show you some of the techniques I've used to bring our geometric character into play. I will say, you know, the, the other thing that I use a lot is the radial, uh, the radius tool. So for instance, when I created this leg or any of these legs, it's very simple. I'm just clicking out the shapes. In this situation, I'm actually, I knocked that out to be a perfect circle, but you'll get the idea here. Um, but I like to just kind of click, click, click. And then I come back with the radius tool later. And I'll just click those corner points and kind of just resolve those like this. I remember when Adobe added this feature and I was so excited. It's like one of my favorite things. So that's kind of how I go about building a lot of the shapes. Once I've kind of got that main shape with the circles and I'm starting to think about those inner shapes and the other pieces, uh, that pieces of the puzzle that go in here. And that is pretty simply how I approach the shape building process on these. So what I want to do is show you a little bit about how I would take a shape like this uh, this piece right here. And I'm going to add a highlight brush that runs and just kind of adds that texture. Just go back to the original, just to kind of show you, we're going to add this brush in that runs across the top. So let me pop back down here. One of the things of uh, features that I love also is right below the uh, fill and stroke uh, little module at the bottom of your tool palette. You drop down a little bit below that, you'll see three little icons there. And one of them, if you roll over to the far right, you'll see draw inside. Click draw inside and you will notice that it creates these um, brackets around your object. That's letting you know that whatever you create next is gonna show up inside that object. So I am going to draw This here, I'm going to draw that line. You don't see it yet because I haven't applied a color to it or anything. Uh, so let me do that first. So let's get rid of the fill. We're gonna make that stroke, that yellow color. And then I'm gonna go through over here with the brush tool and I'm gonna select this fuzzy brush that is by um, Retro Supply Company. This is one of my favorites from their gouache. Uh, it's from their gouache brush sector. Uh, sets and they're so awesome. I love them. I use them all the time. Um, I did see that somebody asked uh, the question, can you manipulate these lines in Photoshop too? Um, so Photoshop's, the way Photoshop handles brushes is very, very different than the way Illustrator handles brushes. Um, and so no, uh, you, these brushes do not work in Photoshop and you don't really use them the same way. Um, I know that there are uh, potentially ways to convert them, um, but I'm not exactly sure <laughs> how to do that. I'm one of those crazy people that uh, uses Photoshop for photos and illustration in Illustrator for illustrations. I know that's crazy, uh, but you know, there's a lot of really talented people out there that use Photoshop for illustration too. Um, but I just love working in vectors. Always have, I think that comes more from my design background. I spend a lot of time creating logos and brand identities. And so it's just much more natural for me to illustrate here. Uh, so basically what I just did was I added that in there. And if you ever click off of that object and you click back on it again, and now you're like, oh shoot, how do I get there with that? Uh, how do I get back there and edit that? You can just simply double click and get into isolation mode. And then you can just grab those points again move them around and readjust. It's one of the things I also love about doing it this way is that it's non-destructive. So you're not just like 
expanding it and and knocking it out and you know doing all this other stuff that you now are not, not able to go back and make changes to later it's all there so the other thing you can do and while i'm in there actually let's go back to our shape here uh while i'm in here i'm gonna also just go ahead and grab a brush and we're gonna just throw some stripes on these tails so i'm gonna click across here i'm gonna pick one of these other brushes i have this one's called a nasty brush um if you joined me yesterday it's because my kids used to destroy some of my paintbrushes. I'm getting evil eye from my daughter who is sitting in the room right now. It's true. She doesn't like the truth. Sometimes it hurts. Uh, but, you know, brushes that got thrown back in the can after they were used and not cleaned properly. But I'll tell you what, they make really, really great um, texture brushes. So thank you for ruining some of my brushes or I wouldn't have been able to figure that out. Uh, so yeah so basically i'm going to just go through here i'm going to add a couple of these brushes in make these a little smaller let's go 1.5 points and you can tell that i am making them a little bit i'm, I'm option by the way i'm option dragging you'll notice that it makes that duplicate uh with your arrow and i'm just simply going through and currently right now just grabbing and just duplicating and rotating, duplicating, and rotating. And uh, and then I can also just pick a couple of my other brushes, just, just so it doesn't look like I'm using the exact same brush for everything. So let's make that one this one. We'll change this one to that one. And it just kind of varies it. Maybe we can crop this one a little differently by kind of pulling this over there. Gives it a more organic kind of analog shape. My son, who's also in the chat, uh, also mentioned that uh, brushes are not for formatted for Photoshop. Thank you so much um, for jumping in there, Caleb. I appreciate that. Um, and Fabio, you mentioned that the detailed brushes can be heavy on the computer. They can be, uh, but there are some out there that are much, much, much more uh, are much easier to use. And part of it comes down to how many different pixels or not pixels because we're using vectors. Uh, how many different points are on the brush? So, you know, you do, it is a good idea to have a computer that has some decent processing power, um, depending on how much and how deep you get into this. Um, I will say like the computer I'm running is about three years old and it maybe two or three years old now, and it seems to handle it pretty well. I also have a lot of memory in it, um, but it, it, I feel like over the years, Illustrator has gotten a lot more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it used to crash it a lot more often. I haven't had that problem in quite a while. Um, so what I'll do here, this is uh, the way that I'm going to work on this leg here. Um, can kind of show you what we're going for, but we're going to kind of add kind of this toning in uh, where we kind of go from like step down to a couple different colors. So we're going to go from the the lighter blue, the lighter of the darker blues to the really dark blue. So once again, we'll go back down here. I'm gonna click that leg. We're gonna go to paint inside or color inside, I should say. And I'm just gonna make a box and we're gonna make it the color of that blue that we want. I'm just gonna draw a box in here. And you'll notice that it just filled inside that inside the contents of that. So I can just rotate that a little bit. We kind of want that to curve there and then i'm gonna add grab my pen tool we're still coloring inside the box so i can just grab my pen tool i'm gonna flip it to uh where it's the stroke and then we'll just go through here and i'm gonna click in the brushes our gouache shader from retro supply co again and i'm gonna just bump this down to like a 0.6 so it's not quite as chunky so that's how I just filled in that, that top piece there. And then what I can do is double click again, get into isolation mode, select both of these. I'm gonna do copy front, drag it down. You can't see them because they're the exact same color, but I can go over here and I can just fill with the darker blue. And then I can make our brush that's on top here, the darker blue. And so that's that's how I go about just kind of creating these 
toned shapes, toned colors within the shapes. All right. So uh, one of the things I try to do when I'm doing an illustration like this is I try not to allow too much of the same color uh, to touch itself. So if you look right here, these two colors are touching another shape of the same color. So I want to kind of break that, break those apart a little bit. So I'm going to, I also want to put this leg to the back. So if you think about this dimensionally, the, the rear leg is going to kind of be behind the other leg. So for doing that, I'm just going to go through here. I'm going to add a draw inside again. This time I'll just use the pen tool. It's going to fill in a shape here. We'll fill this with the dark blue. And then once again, grab our pen, our brush tool, our pen tool, sorry. And then I'm going to go back up here. Give that stroke a dark, that dark color blue. And we will hit the brush tool there, fill that in. I'm gonna make that just a little bit smaller and make that maybe a 0.7. So you can see how just adding some, some shading, some subtle shading, just that one color just really adds some dimension. It really brings this leg to the front, this one back to the back. Looks like we got a couple other people joining. Uh, General Kenobi's back. I just love it when we've got Star Wars uh characters following that makes me happy very happy uh just we just went and did did uh, rise of the resistance down at at disney in january if you have not had a chance to do that highly recommend it whoa it is quite an experience so um you know it doing this other leg could be as simple as just double clicking here i don't, don't know why it's doing that let's see if i double click i should be there we go there we go I'm going to just select everything that is in here, I'm going to copy it, and I'm actually just going to come over to this other leg here, and I'm going to go to color inside and paste. Just going to rotate that a little bit. And it brings all the assets right in there where you need them. So if you wanted to just kind of do that, and then you've got everything there. So... Uh, you can just simply, you know, select, uh, go into isolation mode here and just move these brushes, move these shapes to where you want so that it fills the space the way you want to. Having a hard time getting that shape there. Let's rotate that just a little bit more. Um, so, you know, for the purposes of this demo, I'm really kind of flying through here. Um, usually take a little bit more time to kind of make sure where everything goes, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of how I go about doing this so you can do it yourselves and, and spend more time than I am just to make sure that it's right uh, on all of this. Let's see. So that's uh, how I go about like filling, the, filling in some of the, the highlights up there uh adding in just some of these details i just wanted to kind of show you a little bit of that and then you'll also notice one of the things i like to do is kind of break outside the shape so these are all things that you do inside the shape to add all that texture um and you, you can see when i go back to the original i'm using that exact same technique um when i'm adding that shade and that's running along the bottom of like the tree here and the branches and for those, I'm actually using two brushes from my nasty brush collection right here. And uh, I just vary those back and forth. So this is that, that uh, gouache shader 14 from Retro Supply that I'm using. Then I kind of use that because if if you see these animals in real life, they're, they're less like furry and shaggy and almost like fuzzy, like a stuffed animal. I kind of think of them as like a Nerf ball. And uh, so if I was going to shade a Nerf ball... This is definitely the texture I would use to do that. So um, I like just kind of thinking about things like that. Like if I wanted to snuggle with this guy, he may claw me to death. I mean, they look really cute, 
when they're up in trees, uh, kind of like a koala, which I've heard are actually really violent. Um, sorry to ruin that for any of you if you thought they were cuddly, but um, these these kind of may fall into that same category. But one of the things I like to do is to um, bring some of these textures outside of the shapes as well, just to bring some detail in. Um, and so if you notice here, these are just simply some brushes that I've drawn and added around the edges. I'll show you how I do that and how I kind of soften up some of these. Because right now, um, these shapes on the face are really, really harsh. So you can do this a couple different ways. Honestly, the simplest way to do it, since we're going to be filling it with another color that it's right, that it's going to be sitting over, I'm just going to make an orange line here and pick one of these brushes that has like a really nice kind of soft ending to it where it kind of has some texture. Pull it in like this. I think the other side of this brush up here, let's see, I'll pull it out and look. Yeah, it has a little bit more uh, of what I'm looking for. So if I go back to the pen tool and I select my brush and I select my line and I want to reverse it, I'm going to click the other side. Oh, nope, that was the side I clicked originally. So I'm going to click the other side. Let's try that again. Uh, uh, I'm going to get there. Uh, it's, it's automatically trying to continue that line. So let me try that again. All right, pen tool. There we go. So if you just change the direction of the brush, and you can do that just by selecting the, uh, the other end of the brush. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, actually, I'm going to switch. Let's try... I'm gonna try this brush actually, now that I've gone through all of that. Uh, and we'll just go back to using this side as the other end of the brush. That's a lot better. That looks more like a hair. So let's pull this back in here. So what I'll do oftentimes is just kind of grab that, duplicate it, and hit E for kind of transform so I can kind of rotate that a little bit. And I'll just do this to just add a little texture along the edges of these. It just softens it, makes it look a little more organic, but I like to also keep enough of the shape that you still kind of see those geometric shapes that are going on beneath. It's hard for me to see my keyboard with a mic in the way. So let's see. So that's how I go about doing that. You can do the exact same thing um, down here if you want to kind of Soften up the cheek shapes here a little bit. Just kind of pull, pull some of these brushes across. And in this situation, I actually am okay with it kind of breaking outside. Whoa, I don't want to do that. Breaking outside a little bit. I, I like that it kind of adds some softness to the overall illustration by allowing some of these brushes to kind of break out of, of the shape a little bit. So that's how I usually go about, you know, adding some shapes. You can also, if you want to keep it contained inside the shape, you can do the same thing by just doing what we did before, where you select the shape, go to color inside, and you just basically put the brush inside the shape. But you can just use this to just do some really, really cool stuff. Don't know how many of you are familiar with the art of Charlie Harper. He is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, he is from right here in Ohio. And... Um, what I love about his work is that juxtaposition of like geometric shapes and uh, brush strokes. And that's one of the things I really, really, really love. So, um, yeah, so let me just grab this again. If, I, if you wanted to just kind of add a little bit more of this shading in here or a little bit more of this texture in here to kind of bring those, uh, those kind of whiskers and softness out, I'm going to just cut and paste that in front of this shape. You can just do that with uh, Command F. We'll paste in front, and that way it kind of like sits behind my other face shape here. So that's a great way to just kind of add a little bit more texture, a little bit more interest to your illustrations. And you can see how radical the difference is between you know going from something like this, where you you know have something very very basic. This almost looks like a logo. Which is, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with it. I, I really love this, but when you just take it to the next step and you start building and adding some of these in, like I used uh, that retro supply brush here as well, just to kind of soften around the eyes. 
added it as well right here to just kind of add a little bit of a shape, a little bit of a shade here as well. So very fun stuff. Um, and if you look, I'll, I'll jump over here to my sloth here as well, just to give you some sort of a, an idea, you know, here's the finished sloth that I did. And here is the kind of derpy looking, uh, just basic vector version that just doesn't do it for me. I, I mean, it, I, I think it's fine, but just adding all that other texture in all those other brushes in and stuff, it does some really cool stuff. So Fabio, I saw that uh, you upgraded your PC recently and gave up on using Illustrator brushes. I'm sorry. Um, I will tell you that that you may also not be using the right brushes. Some of the brushes, different brushes have different numbers of uh, points in them. And so you may have just been using some brushes that are very, 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 um, very complicated. You, one of the ways you could, you may be able to solve that is if you grab a brush, and this wasn't in my plan here, but I'm gonna show you anyways. Um, if I'm just gonna grab this brush and I'm gonna drag it out onto my desktop or out onto my board here. And one of the things you can do is try this, grab that brush. You're gonna go to, let's see if I can do this on the fly. We're gonna go to path and we're gonna go to simplify. And you can, right now I've got 12, this brush has 1200 points. I can back this down a bit. Now I'm, I've got 800, 850. At some point in time, it starts to fall apart and it doesn't look too great. But you'll notice like just doing that, I just took like 600 or 400 and some points out of that brush. Um, and that means it will work a lot more effectively and efficiently. And then what you can do is just, um, option hold the option key down and drag it back over the brush or maybe you want to just make a new one just to, to try it um just basically drag that brush into the brush palette you're going to make it an art brush and make sure you have your colorization mode set to tints and we can kind of see how that brush looks much more efficient brush this one would use a lot less uh, processor power. So, um, you can basically take some of the brushes you already have and just try that, try running simplify on them, getting rid of a bunch of, of the points on it. And I think that that would really, really, uh, help make it go a lot, a lot more smooth. Just let me know if that helps you out at all. That would be, uh, the way that I would approach it. I've done that a few times with some brushes I've purchased or even that I've made myself and realize, oh man, that's just way too complicated. This is bogging my system down. So that's a great way to do it. Thank you, Fabio. I love the sloth too. Sloths are another one of those super cute animals that I'm afraid would claw my face if I actually had it as a pet. Yeah, my daughter agrees. So um, that's that's kind of my approach for how I go about doing these. This is all of this was done exactly the same way. I've got my brush that is uh, that shade brush that's basically just in the color inside that I'm using to kind of add this shade in here and, and all these shapes I'm doing the exact same thing. You can kind of click through and see exactly what those are and uh, how nice that is to be able to just go through and tweak a little bit once you've got it all done um, and you can kind of look at it from that perspective as just the ability to to always be able to go in and edit and change uh, versus having to like go in and try to illustrate and draw all those little points and pixels or little dots and stuff. It, it would be a, a disaster. I would, I might quit my job. I wouldn't actually quit my job, but I might. Um, so I'm going to jump out of this one and I'm going to hop over. This is this of uh, the other style that I talked with you guys about uh, earlier in my intro. And um, this is a really cute little beaver, which I don't think would claw my eyes out. I actually think he would just build something in my living room for me. Maybe. Furniture. I don't know. I need some furniture, so maybe I need a beaver in my house. Um, but what I always do with animals and uh, in my illustrations like this is I always start with the most basic shapes. Um, one of the things Walt Disney taught us is that you should be able to distill and notice something and recognize something from the simplest, simplest silhouette. If you look at any illustration of Mickey Mouse, you'll notice that, for instance, Mickey's ears are always facing the viewer. They aren't ever sideways. 
Um, because Walt always wanted you to be able to know instantly when you saw Mickey, that's Mickey Mouse. Um, and if you, that tradition has continued on over the years with, uh, with Disney's animation, like you should be able to see any silhouette and know like that's this dwarf or that's Buzz Lightyear or whoever it happens to be, they all have such unique, uh, shapes to them. So if you get to this point and you can't tell what this is going to be, chances are you probably need to find a new reference or start with something different. So um, I would recommend um, just, you know, finding something that you can kind of go, okay, yeah, that's definitely the shape of beaver. I think we're good to move forward. Um, next thing I do is sort of like I did on that last one is I want to kind of add some texture to make this look like an underpainting. If you've ever done any sort of um, painting with um, oil paints or what have you, it's always a good idea to start with an underpainting. And that's basically what we're doing. What I like to do is pick a dark shade. If, if the animal is going to mostly be brown, I'm going to pick the darkest possible shade that I have without actually um, making, making him like black. I very rarely use black in any of my illustrations. I think it, it really kind of dulls the, the overall look of it. But I like to just kind of grab some brushes that that I can just add in like I'm doing right here and just add a little bit of softness around it. So it kind of looks like when I started this, um, it wasn't just a vector based drawing. It just kind of has some nice softness to it, like the brush strokes. And I like doing it in the direction that the hair is going to flow. Next step is I'll build kind of that undercoat that that next level, uh, like one one shade darker. And um, one of the ways I've done this is you'll notice that some of these are just typical brushes like I had before. Um, but sometimes you need something that looks a little more like this. And these are scatter brushes that I used to create to, to kind of add those layers of that undercoat of fur. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So, um, and then also I'll just layer on top. After that, I just kind of added another layer. This has got just something that adds a little bit more um, chroma, something that adds a little more uh, brightness and color to the overall uh, illustration. So I'm using kind of some brighter reds here, something that brings a little more saturation into it. And then I like to kind of finish those up with sort of a warm highlight. So, if, or, or if, if it's gonna be like in a moonlit situation, you might wanna use a cool highlight where you're basically taking this color and you're you're taking your color palette and you're just adding a warmer color to it. So it's how I how I get there. And then the last step, add those details in little cute little eyes and ears and uh, maybe some foliage in the foreground. Love the word foliage. Um, so one thing I want to draw your attention to is for this illustration, I'm essentially using one brush for everything here. And so what I want to show you is some really cool tips that I've figured out to kind of take one brush and do some really, really fun uh, things with it. So maybe you've already created your brush. You, maybe you've taken my workshop or you've done it yourself and you've already scanned it. You've already gotten it all set up and you realize you need a shorter version of that same brush. And so you like draw out your line and let's say, I'm just going to duplicate this down like this. Thank you, Jane. I see your comment on there. I really, really appreciate it. Um, but let's say I want to draw a shorter line with the same brush. Does this look like it came from the same brush? I think not. I think this looks really weird and distorted. Um, so what I really want is a brush that's about that same length, but I want it to feel like it came from the same source material, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush we have that I that I uh, have right here. You can either drag it, drag one back out of the brush palette, or you can just kind of expand the one you have here. I'm just going to expand this brush object, expand appearance. And so now I have an outlined vector version of the brush. I'm going to, I'm going to option drag it down here. I'm going to hit command eight, command eight takes that object and it makes it a compound path. We want to make sure this is a compound path. So the illustrator is seeing this all as one path, not a group of paths. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to option drag another copy of that over here. I'm going to select both of these. We're going to come over here to the pathfinder 
Um, this is another great opportunity that a lot of people don't realize you can do this, but I'm going to hold the option key down and I'm going to click that intersect button. So basically what I've just done is I've created using the same source material, a shorter brush kind of has the same feel to it. And what's great about it is I can just double click this and I can move these around and even make it a little bit different, adjust it to where I want it to be. Right. So now I have, I just built another brush just using the source material of the brush above. So what's also cool about that is let's say I want a really skinny brush or something that's just kind of adds a lot of, you know, um, just a lot more texture. Well, I can just kind of double click this again. And this time I'm going to move this around like that. And that one's got a very vibrant, like that's got a lot of motion going to it. Danielle, thank you. Game changing. I love to hear that. Thank you for your compliment on there. Um, but yeah, so, so now I've created like another brush from that. Let's not stop there. Let's option drag this down again. Oops. Nope. I've got to go back to, I was in isolation mode. I'm going to bring this down again. And now let's double click and see what we can do. If we kind of go like this, now we're going to get like a really skinny, thin sort of brush. Maybe we make it a little bit longer. Maybe we rotate this just a little bit. So we basically just took one brush. We made a library of three new ones. Um, and I'm going to just select all of these. Go to expand. We can click that on the Pathfinder tool right there. And then all you have to do is drag that brush into your brush palette. And I'm going to make that an art brush. Okay. Yes. Wait, there's more. There's more, Sean. There's more. Uh, and I'm going to basically create a brush with our new little one that we created before. But wait, there's more. Uh, what we'll do next is in order for me to kind of create that undercoat that I did, uh, earlier where we added these brushes that kind of come around like that, I'm going to take this brush that we made from a brush and another brush, and I'm going to take this one. If you're not sick of the word brush, by the time we're done with this, uh, I don't know who will be, uh, and I'm just going to expand it. Now this time I'm going to drag this one over into our brush palette, but I'm going to make it a scatter brush and i'm also going to make set this to tints hit okay and the way that i created those other ones where is to use that same brush is i'm going to just go like this and draw a line out and we're going to attach that scatter brush to that line So if we double click, now we can get into how we edit this brush. So I'm gonna move the, the uh, spacing a lot closer together. Okay. And then um, right now that's kind of cool, but it's very uniform and it looks kind of like very, very, um, like it looks like you're using the same brush over and over again. So what we'll do is let's just kind of vary this a little bit. So for size, I'm gonna just make it so that this goes to random and we're going to go to like 140%. And then I'm going to dial this back to like 62%. So now we've got some nice variation going on in here. And then uh, I'm going to go into my rotation, set that to random. And we're going to just kind of let these rotate a little bit, just off one way, off the other way a little bit. So we're getting a little bit of random rotation going on as well. And then for scatter, um, scatter basically tells us how far off the, the main the drawn pen line, uh, it allows that object, that brush to move off of it. So I'm gonna go to scatter and go to random. And I'm just gonna set this to like, let's try, let's try 20 and see what that does. Okay, that's a lot, but let's try it, negative 20. Uh, yeah, maybe a little too much. So I'm going to dial that back to like 10 and negative 10. 
And then I usually will kind of bring that spacing back in a little bit tighter once I've done that. I think the size might be a little too random. So I'm gonna bring those large ones back in a little bit. But you kind of get an idea. It gives you lots of opportunity to kind of create a texture that works really well. I'm gonna hit apply to strokes. And that is exactly how I went about creating those, that undercoat above. So we took a brush, we used another brush to make a brush, and then uh, we used that brush to make a scatter brush. And that is exactly how I create these, these kind of undercoat pieces that are running along here. They're like brush babies, like babies of brushes. I don't know. Uh, but it's super fun, and hopefully that gives you some... Oh, I didn't want to delete my headline. Gives you some uh, ideas and ways of kind of thinking about how you could do that as well. So um, I'm going to shoot over here and show you another little guy I worked on. This is a green heron. I believe this is a green heron, but he's blue. I don't understand. I didn't name it. Uh, but there's a lot of blue, maybe because it's blue green. I don't know, but it's a beautiful bird nonetheless. And I did the exact same thing. I'm using the exact, exact same technique. Um, I started with a very base shape. You can kind of see it sort of there by where I'm clicking and, and where all the nodes are. There's that base shape. Added a few other brushes in to kind of add in some texture, like the brush uh, kind of flicked outside the shape a little bit. And then I just go through and I overlay those colors by just kind of throwing some brushes over top. And so also one of the things I'm going to back up a second, go back down here. One of the things I failed to mention, and I even put it right here in my notes to myself and I missed it. But one of the things you can do also with a brush to, um, let's see, I'm going to actually pull one out here because I expanded that one. So let's just Just do something like that. Take a brush here. Let's say you uh, want to kind of add a little bit more flair to this brush. Do something a little bit different where it doesn't look like the same width all the way across. Right up here at the top um, and under the stroke menu, you'll see in the profiles that uh, you'll see uniform. One of the things you can do that's very simple, go under uniform and I'm just gonna pick with profile one. And now I get this really nice tapered version of that exact same brush. Oh, okay, so green herons are smaller than blue herons apparently. That's very cool. Thank you, Clever, I did not know that. Um, and even though I'm working with the parks to illustrate them, um, but apparently we have some here in, in the Ohio area and they are absolutely beautiful birds. So I've really enjoyed doing that illustration. But what I was uh, showing you is that you can just change that brush, file, that brush profile on the fly just simply by picking some of these different profiles. And the, it does some really, really cool stuff. Just amazing. It's almost hard to believe that's the same brush being used for those. The other way to do it is I'm going to just go back to the normal profile. If you want to be even more, um, if you want to be able to do even more cool stuff with it and get really, really, oops, I didn't want to click that. I want to keep this on the brush. I want to change the brush profile to uniform. You can go in and get even more specific with it by using the width tool, which is right over here on the left in your tool palette. You can just grab any point and you can adjust the width of that brush in different places and you can even move that around to adjust it in different places so like um, once you've set it in place it doesn't have to stay there you can just drag and drop you can even delete them after you've put them in place uh, and, and clear them out one of the things i will tell you when you're using the width tool is the fewer of those the better the fewer uh, of those points you add the better but you'll notice up here it actually created a brush profile in the brush profile spot where we were before that's shaped exactly like what we just made. So it's kind of interesting how those work together. I've noticed that a couple of times. So that is another great way to kind of manipulate and use your brushes in different ways to get different results. And I've used him, used that quite a bit. You'll notice 
that brush right there, even though it's the same brush I'm using everywhere on here, I use that brush profile to kind of just add some de depth and dimension there as well. So I'm going to hop over here. One of the unique um, problems I had to solve with this heron was that it had uh, some pretty detailed feathers. So what I did was I actually took uh, two ovals and I used my path operations here to um, knock one out of the other. Let's see here. Oh, no, 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 no. Here we go. Boom. Boom. And then I use my brushes to create a softer edge all the way around. You can just basically uh, take the brush and bring that to the front. Kind of soften up those edges a little bit, expand this, and you're going to use your path operations and, and uh, your pathfinder and knock it out, punch it out of this. So what you end up with is essentially something that looks like this, which looks a lot like kind of a chunkier version of the, the um, actual wing, uh, the feathers that were in, in the wing. And by the way, if you're curious how I made these uh, leaves, watch yesterday's uh, episode because this, these are also all created in brushes. I did yesterday's was all about plants um, and you'll get some good useful tips on how I create my leaves for, for that as well. But today we're talking about animals and uh, what I want to show you is how I solved this unique problem, and that is to create this feather brush and then simply apply it like this. And then I'm going to option drag, option drag, rotate it a little bit, option drag. And I essentially uh, just basically did it this way. You can adjust the width and the thickness by changing the point size of the stroke. So if I wanted to make that one a little bit thicker, I could make that a full point, one point stroke. And um, I just layered them on top. And then to get those thicker brushes above, um, you can just kind of grab this. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit make this maybe a 1.5 and I'm going to just layer that one over top. Um, it's a very simplified version, but that's is exactly how I went through and created the wing on here. And with all the, with all of the texture and detail in here to go through and draw every one of those lines would have been horrible. Uh, it would have taken forever. But what's great about this is you can just go in and make any fine adjustments to those that you want to make just by grabbing any one of them and kind of tweaking them and, and moving them into place. So very, very cool. I wanted to show you one other quick thing. Thank you, Carol, for your kind compliment. Appreciate that. Danielle, my tips are game changing. I love that. I love it when I can help people uh, do work better and faster. This one I really loved. Um, this is a yellow spotted salamander, also found in the park system that I'm working with. Um, and I was trying to figure out how do I place these dots on him so that they wrap the right way and they are uniform. So I could have gone through and drawn each one of these, but instead what I did was I basically created this brush right here. And you can see as I select here, this is one line that I have basically applied that to in order to get that, get those dots. And what's cool about that is, you know, let's say I got this all done and, and I realized, oh shoot, uh, I wanted to have more dots in there. I have too many uh, going on right now or, or too few going on right now. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna pull these back a little bit. I'm gonna add two more dots to my salamander and I'm just gonna do this. Well, all I have to do is go into my brushes now, select all of these, and option drag it back over in my palette here. Hit OK, apply to strokes, uh, and then you'll notice that it it one of the things it does is it messes with the profile. So this is where I'll go back through, and I'll use that profile tool that I showed you before, and we'll just grab that, taper up the ends here. 
and uh, make any adjustments if we want it to be a little bit like wider in certain areas. We can just grab that brush, pull it out, pull it in a little bit. But that just saved me a ton of time of having to redraw all of the spots just to add a couple more. So hopefully um, that's super, super valuable for you as well. Everything here is also the same thing uh, that I've been creating with my other animals that I've been showing you. Just tapered brushes, um, painting inside, adding some drop shadows in there. It just makes it very, very easy to work with. Um, and what's really great about it is, is it makes it all look like it came from the same place. It all looks like the same artist. It looks like the same series of uh, illustrations. So um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful for you today. I really enjoyed sharing this with you and um, uh, that's all we have time for. So stay tuned for pro tip segment coming up with Delta Tango Mike and that's coming up next and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time. Thank you.